Max Verstappen disobeyed a direct team order to let Checo through for sixth place in Sao Paulo in Checo's fight for second in the championship. With Max wrapping up his second driver's title in Suzuka and then Red Bull clinching their fifth constructor's title in Austin, the only thing that Red Bull have left to fight for is to get their first ever 1-2 in the championship. Despite how dominant Red Bull were at the peak of the Vettel era, Weber was never able to finish second, and so you can see why getting a 1-2 would be a significant achievement and a landmark milestone that would underline the incredible season that they've had. Going into Sao Paulo, the gap between Checo and Leclerc was just 5 points, and now going into the final race at Abu Dhabi, it's just like 2021 all over again as they are now equal on points. More shocking however than Max going against the team was the revelation that he had already told the team that he was going to do this, and that his ultimatum goes all the way back to qualifying in Monaco. At the end of the race, Checo let Max pass on lap 67 to see if Max could overtake Alonso after Max himself was having a bad race after an early collision with Lewis. When Max couldn't overtake Alonso, the team ordered to give the place back to Checo because in their eyes, the points difference would be far more significant for Checo in the fight for second and Max would only be giving away a P6 which after 14 Grand Prix wins this season seems pretty insignificant. However, Max did not give the position back because he felt like he had explained to the team beforehand why he needed to make a point and why he felt justified to do so. To get the best perspective, I'll let the driver team radios give you the full picture. Max, I'll let you through. Yeah. Thank you for that, guys. Thank you. I'm sorry about that, Checo. We're DP happy check. I'll put. Yeah, it shows more who he really is. Yeah, don't worry about the DRS, Max. Let Checo through. Let Checo through. Max, let Checo through, please. Max, what happened? I told you already last time. Uh, you guys don't ask that again to me. Okay. Are we clear about that? I gave my reasons and I stand by it. The big question after the race was why? What was the reason that Max was referring to that he had told the team beforehand that made him basically have a vendetta against Checo and in his mind, why did he feel that he needed to get even? Even though Max and team boss Christian Horner didn't specifically want to say what that reason was, very quickly it became apparent that this was related to what happened back in Monaco during qualifying. Even during the broadcast immediately after the race, Martin Brundle mentioned that it was something to do with Monaco, which was strange because it was completely unprompted and it showed that even Martin had some kind of prior knowledge of something that we didn't know about. The real story started to come out when a Dutch journalist tweeted that Dutch racing driver and pundit Tom Coronel revealed to Viaplay that Perez deliberately crashed in qualifying and even admitted this to Christian Horner and Helmut Marko. Tom Coronel also then retweeted this tweet which quoted him, so this was not random words taken out of context. Now, even though he doesn't explicitly state that he also told this to Max, if we're being honest, there is no way that Max didn't know about this if both Horner and Marco did. Now again, both Horner and Max after the race were very tight-lipped on if this had anything to do with Monaco. Obviously, when you're talking about a driver potentially crashing on purpose and then admitting it to you, it's not something you want to say out loud. But Rachel Brooks from Sky Sports flat out asked Max if his grudge was anything to do with Monaco, and here's what he said. Well, that's why I first went to speak to the team before I came here and we put everything on the table Why? and I gave my reasons. Is it anything to do with Monaco this year? You can, you can decide that. I'm not going to say. But how not only did Max not deny it, but it doesn't take a body language expert to look at that smile and work out that this has everything to do with what happened in Monaco. So let's go back and take a look at what actually happened. Now, to give some context of where we were going into Monaco, after the Spanish Grand Prix, Max had just taken the championship lead for the very first time in 2022, and in the standings, 25 points separated Max, Charles, and Checo, 
What this meant is that at this point in the season, Checo is still well within the championship fight, and even though he had let Max pass in the previous race in Spain, he is still racing against Charles, and he was still racing against Max, and trying to take points off his teammate. We all know how important qualifying is in Monaco. Checo actually throughout the weekend was the quicker Red Bull, both in practice and then also in the early parts of qualifying. But Max being Max, like all great drivers, he has this ability to build up and leave his best for last. After the first runs in Q3, Checo was the faster driver being in P3, and Max was in P4. During the second runs, however, Max was on a faster lap and looked like he would outqualify Checo and maybe get even further, maybe P2, maybe even pole position. However, Checo on his final run going into Portier, spun the car, clipped the barrier, brought out the red flag, meaning that Red Bull stayed in P3 and P4. Now, how the race then went with the Ferrari disaster class, which of course Red Bull and Checo wouldn't have been able to predict, shows that in the end, in the eyes of Max, him not being able to complete his best qualifying lap, potentially because his teammate crashed deliberately, cost him the win. However, now I'm going to play a few clips so that you can make your own decision without me telling you how to think. I have put back-to-back -back laps together going through that corner, the first being Checo's clean lap that got him into P3, and then the lap that he crashed. In particular, listen to two things. One, how early Checo spikes the throttle before he's even at the apex of the corner, and two, how during the clean lap, the throttle is much more progressive when he's much later on the exit of the corner. The next clip will be three different drivers doing clean laps, and then Checo's crash right at the end for a four driver comparison. Again, listen for the same two things. The reason why I'm showing you those videos is for you to make your own decision, because then you get into the question of why would you risk a gearbox penalty, and why would you crash just to secure P3? But Checo was fighting for the title with Max, and at the time in qualifying, he was ahead of Max. There is also a wider conversation that I haven't seen anyone really talk about. If Checo did crash on purpose, and if he told Christian Horner and Helmut Marko, and then also Max knew about it as well, crashing deliberately is cheating. It was cheating when Michael Schumacher did it in Monaco in 2006, when PK Jr. did it in Singapore in 2008, and if Checo also did it deliberately, and admitted it to his team, that is the four most important people at Red Bull, along with maybe more, that all knew about it. Of course, they were never going to admit it to the FIA or say anything, but knowing about cheating makes every single person that knew and said nothing culpable. And when it comes to crashes, specifically at Monaco, it's something that the FIA need to seriously be monitoring more closely in the future. Now just to reiterate, anyone can think what they want about the incident, but what's most important to me is judging what Max thought. If Max seriously has held a grudge over that Monaco incident for this long, and seriously decided that it was reason enough for him to get his own back, I think it speaks that there is a lot of truth that it was deliberate, and he knew it. Because in Max's mind, the fact that Checo then converted that third place, being the leading Red Bull into the win the next day, Max in his mind would have seen the data and Checo's on board, and would have known that he would have gone quicker, and he would have been the leading Red Bull to take advantage of the win in the race. That's why I think he never forgot what Checo did and what he was referring to when he said in his interview that he put it all on the table for the team and felt justified to get his own back against Checo. However, even though I understand Max being frustrated and angry, 
If Checo played dirty and by doing so inadvertently took away a win from Max, when it comes to being petty enough to hold it over your team's head to try and make a point by not giving away a stupid P6 finish, I just don't get it. If Max was asked to give away a win or even a podium then, yeah maybe you can use what you know against the team to not give that to Checo but for something so inconsequential as a P6 finish, was it really worth it to air out the team's dirty laundry to publicly make the first crack in the relationship between the two teammates and to basically undermine the team also that in your mind you are now square with Checo and everything is fine. Max might feel better mentally after this, but to me, this was a serious miscalculation. More so because I just don't think it was necessary. Max is the better driver, he will always be quicker than Checo, and Checo himself by being a number 2 can make all of the noise in the world. He has no power at Red Bull like Max. If he's unhappy and wants to leave, he is not going to go to a better team. So why does Max feel so threatened that he needs to get revenge on a clear number 2 driver? I repeat again, I just don't get it. Just like in life, in Formula 1, two wrongs never make a right, and to me Max showed a serious flaw in his ability as a leader on the same day as Lewis was celebrating a win for his teammate as if he had won the race himself, all in the name of being the team leader and building that trust with his teammate. If Mercedes and Ferrari get closer in 2023, Max might need Checo on his side, but now with the backstabbings and the betrayals, that help might not come as easy next time out. <laughs> Thank you.